will be considering what I've decided to title what we are doing is not right. <laughs> Why are you laughing? What we are doing is not right. It's not right. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Give us the message rendition. Elisha said, listen, God's word, the famine's over, the famine's over, this time tomorrow, food will be plentiful. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. It takes faith to believe this. So. <laughs> it takes faith. And I want you to understand that the kind of experience that we are going through as a country was the kind that they were going through at this time. The kind of situation where it is very difficult to believe God. Very difficult to believe his word. Very difficult to take in what he's saying. So when he says the famine is over, people were just looking at him. What is this guy talking about? This time tomorrow, food will be plentiful. A handful of meal for a shekel. Two handfuls of grain for a shekel. The market at the city gate will be boozing. Hallelujah. <laughs> now let me tell you, let me tell you. You can believe this in two ways. Two ways. You can believe it in the first part that things will just change and transform in Nigeria. And you can believe it that even if it does not change in Nigeria, it will change for you. Yes. To change for you. Whichever you want, take. If you like, take both. Hallelujah. Next verse. The attendant on whom the king leaned for support said to the holy man, you expect us to believe that? <laughs> you expect us to believe what you are saying? My prayer is that nobody is talking like that here. You expect us to believe that? Trap doors opening in the sky and food tumbling out? Then Elisha said, you'll watch it with your own eyes, he said, but you will not eat so much as a mouthful. Since you have decided to doubt, you will see it with your eye, but you will not be a partaker of it. May God cause us to see it. May God cause us to be partakers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go on. It happened that four lepers were sitting just outside the city gate. They said to one another, what are we doing sitting here at death's door? What are we doing here sitting at death's door? If we enter the famine-struck city, we'll die. If we stay here, will die. So let's take our chances. Let's take the risk. 
in the camp of Aram and throw ourselves on their mercy. If they receive us, we leave. If they kill us, what will happen? <laughs> Either way, what happens? We die. Let's take the risk. Either way, take the risk. Many times we're afraid to die. Either way, take the risk. Afraid to die. You die. That's it. Huh. We've got nothing to what? To lose. Nothing to lose. I just want us to learn from the lives of these lepers. Let's learn lessons from their lives. Do you know who lepers are? Who are lepers? Pardon? Kuturus. <laughs> lepers are kuturus. Do you know what you should never do? Pray that you will not annoy any Kuturu man and the person decides to slap you with that hand that leprosy has eaten. The hand, you see, touch your, touch your palms, touch your palms, just touch your palms, touch your palms. Can you rub it together, rub it together, rub it together and jam it together? Can you say, Lord, thank you for my hands? These hands that you rub together and you were feeling some little warmth, isn't it? Kuturu does not feel that. Even if you bring fire and put fire in his hand, the fire will be burning him, he won't feel it. Because all the cells in the hands are dead. The hand of a leper, correct leper, <laughs> is like steel, steel, iron. If the person gives you a slap, that ear is condemned. <laughs> it's like using iron to slap somebody, condemned. God expects us to draw lessons from their lives today as we pray. If we go into the city, we die. If they decide not to have mercy on us, if we sit here, we die because the famine is grievous in the land. Let's take the chance, the risk of going in if they receive us, blessed be the name of God. If they kill us, anyway, we will die before. We have nothing to lose. Go on. So after the sun went down, they got up and went to the camp of Aram. When they got to the edge of the camp, surprise, not a man in the camp. As they got there, not a man in the camp. I was just wondering what must have happened. As these lepers were saying, let's enter the city. If they decide to show us mercy, fine. If they decide to kill us, fine. And the lepers started walking as they were walking to that city. Only God knows whether they had how many lepers, please? Four. As they were moving, only God knew what he did. As they were hearing sound of mighty army coming against them, the whole people fled. They fled. So the people entered and found that the place had been deserted. Not a man in the camp gone. The master, God Almighty, had made the army of Aram hear the sound of horses and of a mighty army on the march. They told one another, 
the king of Israel hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to attack us. Panicked, they ran for their lives through the darkness, abandoning tents, horses, donkeys, the whole camp, just as it was, running for their lives. Go on. These four lepers entered the camp and went into a tent. A tent is like a house. First, they ate and drank. <laughs> what did they do first? They settled their stomach. They had not seen good food before. And here, good food, they settled down and ate and drank. Then they grabbed silver, gold, and clothing and went off and hid it. They came back, entered another tent and looted it. Again, hiding their plunder. Go on. Finally, they said to one another, we shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be doing this. This is a day of good news. And we are making it into a private party. <laughs> We shouldn't be doing this. Can somebody read that place for me from another rendition? Anybody, wherever you are. Anybody. My God, you are too slow. You are too slow. You are not with your Bibles? Finally, Finally they said to each other, this isn't right. This is wonderful news. And we are not sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some terrible calamity will certainly fall upon us. Come on. Let's go back and tell the people the good news. Ah. Let's go back. Another person, quickly. Then they said to each other, what we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news. And we are keeping it to ourselves. And we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait here until daytime. If we wait here until daytime. daytime punishment will overtake us. Uh, Let us at once go and report this to the royal palace. The punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report it. To the royal palace. I asked this morning during the communion if anybody wants to give his or her life to Christ. Nobody raised hand. It meant that all of us are born again. All of us are born again. Between January and this 3rd of March. If you are a child of God sitting here, you have not shared your faith with anybody, the good news of Jesus saving you, delivering you from sin, from iniquity, from wickedness. How God has empowered you to live a life that brings honor and praise to him. You have not shared with anybody from January to this time, to this time, you are not doing well. You are not doing well. What you are doing is not right. And it wasn't yesterday that you gave your life to Christ. That woman at the well of Samaria, immediately she encountered Jesus. 
She ran back to the village and told the people, who said, come see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Come see a man. Could this be the Christ? Come and see him. And she drew the village to Jesus. First day. As a matter of fact, less than a day, some hours. But you have been born again one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years, twenty years, and just mention the years. You find it difficult to share the gospel of Christ, his goodness to you, his salvation to you. You find it difficult to share what you are doing. It's not right. It's not right. I even see some of you to so even just tell your neighbor, maybe even in the hostels, hostels around, to tell your neighbor, you know that they don't go to any church. Please, let's go to the, the chapel. God will bless you. Let's go. Come on, let's go. I assure you, God will bless you. Let's go. Let's go and you invite the person to come and sit and hear the word of God. Many times, people have had to say the kind of things that God is saying to us in this assembly. You don't find it everywhere. To build the lives of men and women, how wicked can you be not to share with anybody? How wicked? How wicked can that be? That you are just taking... And taking and taking, your life is become like a pond. Ponds that do not flow. They smell, they stink. But you want to say my life must flow as a river. Reaching out to people. I should be able to go out and tell my friend, tell my classmate, tell my colleague in the office, come to the chapel. Come and hear the word of God. Come and get an encounter with him. Let's go together. And you are even willing. You know the kind of times that we are. Are such that people find it difficult to sacrifice. Difficult to sacrifice. You are not even able to say. I'll pay our transport. Let's go. Let's go. But I see some of you. People are always inviting you to other places. And when you go. You know the kind of things you hear. But you don't have the courage. You don't have the infantry. You don't have the boldness. You don't have the confidence to say, come, let's go and worship in the chapel. God will reach out to you. You don't have that boldness. Talk less of sharing your faith with people. Hallelujah. In Hib not Hebrews. Proverbs 11.26. Proverbs 11.26 will come back here. Proverbs 11, 26. 26. People curse the man who hurts grain, but blessing crowns him who is willing to sell. People curse the man who hurts grains, but the man who sells it is blessed. Can you imagine the kind of times that we are living in? People are hoarding corn, grains, beans, millets, rice. Just name the grain. People are hoarding it and hoarding several other items, waiting for prices to increase. He said, cause will be upon that man. Is there anybody here? Listening to me, <laughs> it is the word of God. <laughs> he said, curse be. He said, he that withholdeth corn, the people curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that sells it. Now, you are not giving it free. You sell it, you make it available. And you are selling, they say, God bless you, God bless you. Can you imagine, some, somebody told me in one state, in one state, that these filling station people, they are selling fuel, 700 naira, some 800 naira. Then one woman having a filling station there, she's selling her own 650, and people are blessing her. Not that she's giving them free, 
they are blessing her. That she decided to reduce the price by 20 naira, 40 naira, 50 naira, and they are blessing her for selling it a little lower than the price others are selling. Can you imagine how much is a, is a mudu of maize now? You don't know. 700. Eh? 700. Eh? 500. All right, that guy has been to the market long, <laughs> long, long, long. Seven to eight hundred. All right. She said one thousand in Kaduna. Can you imagine if you bring your maze out and you decide to sell it six hundred? What will happen to you? The blessings that people will bless you will be too much. They will say, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for selling it at 600. I saw a video clip yesterday. Do you know this rubber spoon that they used to do general serving if you are serving the public? That rubber spoon. Three of it of Gary is 50 naira. Three. They put three. They are measuring it. And they are asking the girl how much they say it's 50 naira. Three spoons of Gary, 50 naira. And as the people are selling, they are saying, God bless you, at least we have Gary to buy. How much more you carrying the word of God? How much more you, the eternal word of God that is able to save the souls of men and women? You are carrying the eternal word and from the beginning of this year to the point we are, you have not preached to anybody. You have not told them about the love of Jesus. And some of them are people that are going to die. Going to die. I shared the experience of one sister in the hostel some few years back. Her own roommate, roommate, roommate. God kept telling her, witness to your roommate, witness to your roommate. She said, tomorrow, tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, she will say next week. When next week comes, she will say tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, she will say after exam. And when after exam comes, she will say, then the roommate fell sick. Ordinary fever. Went for treatment. Was not improving. Then she traveled home to take further treatment with her parents, and she died. Her roommate died. When she heard that the roommate died, she just knew that her blood was on her head. She came crying, ran into the church crying, and I said, what is the matter? She said she couldn't talk for a long time. By the time she gathered herself together, brothers and sisters, and began to say and explain how God has been telling her witness to this person, witness to this person. She never knew that she was going to die. She never knew. So she said the blood of this girl is in her hands because she knew very expressly that God was instructing her to speak to her, to preach to her, but she did not. So she was asking me, in tears, hot tears. She says, sir, what will I do now? I say, me, ma, I don't know. <laughs> because the person has died, I don't know what he will do again now. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But what I can do with you now is to pray with you that from this point on, if God tells you to talk to somebody, talk to the person. Some of you are in rooms with people. Your roommates are not born again. Our neighbors are not born again. But you are not able to reach out to them. We cannot preach to them. We cannot share the word of God with them. God is challenging us this morning that what we are doing is not right. For some of us seated here, all you can do, having come to the saving knowledge of God, is to task your parents. You task your parents and say, 
My, my money has finished, oh, my money has finished. Send money to me. And the parents that are sending money to you, they are not saved. You are not interested in their going to heaven. You don't know that any moment that man, that woman, your father or your mother falls dead, the person will not make heaven. It is not a concern to you. What is concern to your heart is for them to be supplying provisions. Supplying provisions. It has never moved your heart to witness to them. To even send text messages to them about their lives, their salvation, appreciating all that they are providing for you and asking them if they have made their hearts right with the Lord. It does not move you. It does not move you. I think Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 Ezekiel 3.18, I hope that's correct. Give us Ezekiel 3.18. Yeah. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him no, not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked man from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. His blood will I require at your hand. You are in a room with somebody as a student and you are there for almost one year. You know that man or that woman is not born again and you never witness to him. The blood of that man is in your hand. Some of them are your neighbors and some of you are students. I see what you do. You are a child of God. I was talking with one of you here and the person said, the roommates were bringing boy to come and sleep in their room. I said, what did you do? He said, nothing. He said, they are in their corner. Me, I'm in my corner. A child of God? I said, what are you talking? Repeat what you said. They're in their corner. You, you are in your corner. So they can do anything. A man will come and sleep in a female hostel and you are a child of God? What are you talking about? You are a brother in the Lord. Your roommate, an unbeliever, will bring a lady to sleep in your room and you say nothing concerns you. What kind of witnessing are you doing? What sort of witnessing is that? If you are here today, you must take a stand for God from henceforth that an end has come to that kind of rubbish where I am as a child of God. You cannot take that in and say you are minding your business. We don't have people come to testify again. I hope you know. We don't have people. When you are talking about testimony, people only come and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As I was trusting the Lord for 100,000 naira, God just increased it to 120,000. Hallelujah. As I was trusting the, the Lord for a breakthrough, God just opened the door for a mighty contract and I got the contract. Praise the Lord. We don't hear people give testimony. So as I was praying for this, my roommate, as I was praying for my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, that God will encounter them. After three years of standing with God in the place of prayer, the person has finally come to the saving knowledge of God. Giving his life to Christ, we don't hear those testimonies anymore. Because people are no more witnessing. People no longer share their faith. People no longer preach Jesus wherever they find themselves. We don't hear testimonies anymore saying, I am a secretary in this office and my boss the head of department, the dean of the faculty, the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, the registrar, whoever that man or woman may be. 
who do not know God and you kept witnessing to the person as a daughter of God, as a son of God, and the person repented and gave his life or her life to Christ and you are standing to share that testimony. That testimony has disappeared from the pulpits, disappeared from the church of God. We only share testimonies about bread and butter. And God is wondering, if I warn a wicked man and I have said to every wicked man, you will die and perish. So with the eye that you see that your roommate that has not come to the saving knowledge of God and it does not prick your heart that this person is bound for hell and you preach. Your own business is to preach. Conversion is of the Holy Spirit. Preach the word. Preach the word. Share the faith. There are people that will not come to church. They are close to church. Share with them and invite them to come for fellowship, for worship. You will not do that. He said, his blood, I will require at your hand. Go back to that second kings. Go back. They ran for their life. Go on, verse 8. The four lepers entered the camp and went into a tent. First they ate and drank. Then they grabbed silver and gold and clothing and went off and hid it. They came back, entered another tent and looted it again, hiding their plunder. Go on. Finally, they said to one another, we shouldn't be doing this. This is a day of good news. And we are making it into a private party. My friend, that you are born again is not your private property. It's not your private party. Say, I'm just born again. I'll just keep it to myself. It's not your private party. Private stuff, no. It is for God's glory. And you must use it for that purpose. Failure to use it for that purpose is to give account of it before God. Remember the song writer saying, Must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior soul? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty handed go? Must I go and empty? Must I meet my Savior so not one soul with which to greet him? Must, must I end And when you go to God, that man, it was on his death bed that he repented. And having repented, he was saying, a wasted life. All I have done in life, wasted. Now I'm going to face my master and I don't even have one soul with which to greet him and say, Father, thank you. I brought this person to your saving knowledge. Here is this soul. Not one soul, but he died on his deathbed like that. He realized it was a wasted life. I'm sharing along this line, brothers and sisters. Next Sunday, we will go for evangelism. Next Sunday. Even if you have never gone for evangelism before, come. Next Sunday, we will reach out. God will grant us souls in the name of Jesus. Not one soul with which to greet him. Not one soul. How can we leave January February, we are now in March. Not one soul have you witnessed to. What kind of a Christian are you? What kind of a Christian are you? And if care is not taken, we will go to half of the year or the first quarter we finish. The enter the second quarter, enter half of the year. Not one soul. 
to the end of the year, not one soul. What kind of a Christian is that? He said, what we are doing is not right. Go on, sir. Uh. So they went. They went. And you know the story. Let me just stop there because of time. You know the story. You know the story. They overran the place and the price of food became as cheap as the man of God declared. As cheap as the man of God said. And that officer that was saying, is it possible if God is to open the windows of heaven, this thing can never happen. He perished. He saw it, but he perished. Dare to believe God. And you can say, give me souls. Pray to us next Sunday. And you are saying, this year, I've not won any soul to the Lord. Father, give me souls. Give me souls. Give me souls. And you will go back to your office, go back to your place of work, your neighbors that are not born again. God will give you words for them. Speak the word of God to them, the good news. Just know from today that it is not correct that you have good tidings, good news, and you are holding it. It's not correct. It's not correct. As we pray, Proverbs 11.30. Proverbs 11.30. A good life is a fruit-bearing tree. A violent life destroys souls. King James Version. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is what? Is wise. Is wise. Which people were singing about wisdom today? Who? Eh? Oh, prayer, prayer. Talking about wisdom, prayer. Wisdom. 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 It says the principal thing. The Bible says Christ Jesus, the wisdom of God. So when we are talking about wisdom, we are talking about Jesus himself. For he is the wisdom of God. He that winneth souls is wise. Reverse that scripture. Read it the other way around, everybody. One, two, go. He that does not win soul. Read it again. Who say unwise? You? 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 When you say unwise, eh? unwise, you are just trying to be a polished man, a polished person. Sometimes when you tell somebody you are not wise, the person says, it's okay. <laughs> but when you tell somebody you are a fool, the person will take offense. Because when you say you are not wise, <laughs> is that so? <laughs> when you say you are a fool, it will sink down. Let's read it again now, properly. <laughs> Let's read it properly. He that does not win souls is, is foolish. Can you take note that it's not one soul he talk about? How many souls? Souls. So don't you think that I may have won one soul before? Eh, it's not one soul. Souls is wise. As we pray this morning, you want to make yourself available to God. You are saying, Father, I have been foolish. And you must tell God sincerely, I have been foolish. Wasting my life away. 
Not one soul. And you are saying he that winneth souls is wise. Souls. Souls. I don't even have any soul to show you this year. I don't have any soul to show you last year. I didn't have any soul two years back. And here am I again running a life of foolishness. Have mercy on me as opportunity is given to us next Sunday. Now, Lord, grant souls to me. And as I begin to stand to declare good tidings, how can I keep holding the word of God? How can I? How can I? Keep saying I'm a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God. I don't preach to anybody. I just go my own and wickedness and evil taking place round about me. I do nothing about it. Can you talk to God this morning? You are saying, Father, have mercy. I prepare my heart and prepare myself for next Sunday. As we reach out, grant souls to us. Grant help to us. Grant mercy to us. Grant help to us. Reverend McCann, please. Thank you. You like to just put your hand on your chest if you desire to receive help from the Lord. Lord says a new heart a new spirit will I give Lord we receive a new heart we receive a new spirit that delights in spreading the good news we receive it of you this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take away from us a fearful heart. Take away from us an intimidating heart. Transmit into us a heart of courage to take a step as risky as it may be but which goes with your blessing. Lord, we receive this courage. We receive this boldness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. Stir up within us the joy of thy salvation. Jesus, he says, he who believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Let the rivers of living waters flow out of our belly to water this dry and thirsty land. Dry and thirsty hearts. Lord, may we find favor in your sight. To be the carriers of rivers of living waters flowing out of our belly to water thirsty hearts. In this season of dryness, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for our brother and your servant and our chaplain. Your word says, he who refreshes others shall himself be refreshed. May he also partake in the refreshment that comes from the Mount of Zion. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.